Hi, welcome to part 8 of Blitz Basic Programming for Beginners. At the end of the last session, uh, we put some code in that made you aliens move left and right across the screen. As in, when they got to the right hand side of the screen, they changed direction, and on the left hand side, they changed direction again. Uh, there was actually a bug in that code where when the aliens get to the right hand side of the screen, it changes the direction of the last two aliens on the row, uh, the last column of aliens, one frame before the rest of the aliens and it does the same on the other side and that's because it's checking the aliens from left to right across the rows um, so we're actually changing a piece of code to stop that happening because otherwise the aliens don't move together they slowly shunt into one block in the middle of the screen if they get to move on long enough so where we specified how much the aliens should move by at the start of the code using AMX I've introduced two new variables. One is a speed, which is how fast the aliens will move. Put that to two, which is just two pixels per frame. You can play around with that to find the figure that uh, seems that suits the speed of the game that you want. I've also put in something called chirp dire, which is change direction, and I've specified that to be false to start with. That's what's called a boolean variable. A boolean variable is a type of variable which can be either true or false. All the other variables that we've been using in the game so far have been whole numbers which are integer variables and they're any whole number be it plus or minus. Uh, Blitz does handle lots of other types of variables such as floating point numbers as well uh, which are basically any number with a decimal point and numbers after that. Uh, it also handles strings which are lines of text you can store them and play around them but I'll be covering all that in a separate tutorial. Ok so if we go down to where it checks the aliens now Code's changed down here as well. Um, so we're still updating our alien, our aliens x coordinate by AMX just as before, and we're also checking if they go over 620 or less than 20. But instead of changing the direction of AMX at this point, we're simply changing change direction to be true in both cases, whether it hits the right hand side or the left hand side. And then just before we check the aliens, it checks to see whether or not change direction is true. If it is, then it changes the direction of the alien's movement and then sets change direction to false. That way it affects every alien because it does it just before it, but just before it updates all the aliens. So all the aliens get updated in a block and not singularly in terms of what direction they move in. This will ensure that all the aliens move as one whole body rather than the end ones moving slightly different to the uh, ones in the middle. Um, the next thing I want to do in this tutorial is add in sound effects. Now, I used a program here called SFXR, uh, which is a free program. It's only 40k, or 50k, sorry, in size to download. And if I show you the screenshot, uh, you can randomly generate sound effects with this, or you can specify your own if you, by moving the sliders up and down. And it's just a program designed to make short. Um, basically 80s style sound effects for games so um, a lot of sound effects you've got in NES games and things you'd be able to make that them kind of effects in this so nothing complicated but fine for our Space Invaders game uh, if you want to make asteroids or frogger or anything like that all them kind of effects you'd be able to make in this program I'll put a link to this on the right hand side of this YouTube clip and it will also be on my blog at coffeeandjuice.wordpress.com now the sound effects I've made in that program, I've made one for the bombs, I've made one for when you hit the aliens so that it's explode, uh, I've made one for when your ship gets hit, one for when you fire a bullet. And I've also downloaded a MP3, which I use in my own Space Invaders game, which there's a clip of that on YouTube as well, it's just called Invaders. And that was downloaded from a company called Softworks, which is a German company who have made some free music available to download for any games that you want to make. Uh, I'll put a link to their site on this clip as well. Okay, so to load them into Blitz, use a command, and I'll go to where we load the graphics, load in the sound effects at the same place. So it's going to say load sounds. Now because I'm quite short, short on time on YouTube clips, I'm just going to paste these in. So I've just cut and pasted that from what I typed in earlier. So it's simply a case of name the sound, I'm going to use SND underscore as my naming convention for this, the same way that I use IMG underscore for an, for an image, that way you know what it is you're actually playing with. And then it's load sound, whereas before you had load image, just load sound, 
and then just the file name. So we've got sound shoot equals load sound shoot dot one. Same goes for music, it's sound music equals load sound the fly dot mp3 for this piece of music in particular. And that's all there is for loading sounds. Next bit to do with sounds is to go to parts in the code where you want to play the sound and use the play sound command to play that actual sound out. So we've got here the first bit I come across when we fire bullets. We're going to make a new bullet. So in here I'm going to put play sound. And sound shoot. And I'm just going to run this and hopefully you're able to hear this over my laptop speakers. Oh, I've got a, uh, error. Why am I getting an error? So, I've got double mark. It's from running the screen so big. So if I run it again. Okay. So you should hear there that I'm getting sound effects when I fire my fire my gun. So now we're going to add effects, add sound effects to the rest of the uh, game. So we've got ship hit for when you get hit, bombs for when the alien drop bombs, ex and explosions for when you hit an alien. And then we'll start the music last. So we're going to say we've got a shoot sound effect there. Okay, we've got our alien dropping bombs. So we're going to play sound and the bomb. Keep going down. We've got if the alien gets hit by a bullet. So we're going to play sound S and D explode. Keep going down. We've got if a bomb hits the player. So we're going to play sound S and D hit when the ship gets hit and that's our four sound effects I think we're four, one, two, three, four, yeah so if I now play the game fire we've got our bomb sound effects we've got our sound effect when we get hit and our sound effect for when you lose a life so we successfully added sounds into our game now I uh, won't have time for it in this tutorial, but in the next tutorial we're going to look at adding high scores into the game. So how you update the high score during playing the game, and how you load and save that high score to a file outside of the actual game. Because obviously any information you want to carry over from one game to the next, in terms of if you play the game, turn it off, and then later play it again, uh, the only way of getting information from one play of the game to the next is to save it into a file. Obviously most popular games do this with save files, so on your consoles have got memory cards or a bit of hard drives now for storing this. And on your PC you also have save files for games as well. So this is this is really the first look at how you put a save file into a game. And we'll be doing it just for high scores. I will be doing a, a separate tutorial later on for doing a high score table. Because um, one game I'm working on at the moment has a need for several high score tables. I think it's about four different tables that I'll be storing. So we'll look at that later on. And for this session, uh, bye for now. Very quickly, nearly forgot, not quite bye yet. Uh, I forgot to put in the music at the start of the game. So just before our main loop, we're going to put in play sound, SND music, and then start the game. So hopefully, you're able to hear the music and sound effects. And there you go. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.